You see that? Uh, one of the first snowfalls here in Pennsylvania for the year. Now, there were a couple flurries a few weeks ago, but I, I didn't even count that. It's like actually coming down, not hard, but enough that you know it's snow. And it's not gonna stick to the ground just because the ground's still wet and not cold enough, but it's still snow. And so it, like, it ah, puts you in the mood to bushcraft, to get outside and enjoy the great outdoors. How can you not love this stuff? Well. I know, I know, we all love it. That's why we're on this channel, all that good stuff. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of wood, just this log that we had laying around, or you can cut its diameter wise, I don't know, six, seven inches, um, grab a tool, and you can make a jet fired stove. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Now, for this project, just your normal woodsman gear, okay? So whatever you got in your backpack is going to work, but there are two additional things. One of those things that you might have, you might not have, is some type of larger saw. Now, I say a larger saw because you see the diameter wood that you're gonna want for this. Um, so will a handsaw work? Yes. Um, is it gonna be the best option? No. But, um, so just take a bow saw with you this day because you're gonna need one other thing. And that other thing is some type of auger. Now this is a large T auger, okay, um, to use to drill holes in wood. Now, yeah, you're not gonna carry this every day into the woods with you, but there's all different types of these. There's smaller ones. This is around an inch and a half in diameter. Um, nice built on handle. Well, actually that handle comes on and off. Um, the point being is that you're gonna have to bring some type of auger bit because we need to drill a hole in the wood. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this after it's cut, drill some specific holes, and we can make this thing into a stove that's gonna be very hot in one section if it drafts right and we'll get all into that. So definitely a cool skill to know. And speaking of skills, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. So Skillshare, as I talked about in past videos, is an online learning community with thousands of different classes that you can view, watch, and learn all different skills from. And if you're on my channel, you probably like to learn new tips and tricks and techniques, and that is what Skillshare is all about. The top creators in their field teaching you how to get better at their craft. So I'll give you one quick example and then we'll get on to the project. Um, I get a lot of questions from people at classes and even emails with people that go in the outdoors and they're like, I wanna share my experiences and things that I know about the outdoors with everybody, but I'm not sure where to start. So my thing's always like grab a camera and get going, but then they realize they have to edit. And recently I watched a back to the basics type video on Adobe Premiere Essentials by Daniel Scott. So that's what I utilize for all of my editing. So when you see all those really cool edits that I do, Premiere Pro is what I use. But a lot of the things that we do for YouTube and Instagram and social media, and just going out and taking photography or videography just to share our experiences with people, it all goes back to the basics. Same as here, fire, shelter, water, food, basics. So you can go on there and learn basics about all those things. It's an absolute great resource. And what's really cool is Skillshare is gonna give away a free trial of its premier membership for the first thousand people that click the link below in the description. So click that, get your free membership, check it all out. I guarantee you're gonna love it after that. It's only like 10 bucks a month, so really easy breezy. So thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now back to cutting wood and all that outdoorsy kind of stuff. All right, back to the log. So we got the log. We need to first drill a hole with our auger right down through the top. Now, how far down you go on this, um, I mean, it can vary. I like to go about three quarters of the way down. It seems about best. Um, if it's a bigger log, only go halfway. It depends on how big your auger is too. This auger's so big, I can literally go right through the whole piece. But we'll go about three quarters of the way and then show you the next step. Now you might be thinking, well, all right, so Dan has a hole in here, what does that mean? Well, we're gonna come to the front of the log and drill a hole into the side of it to match up. So inside, if you can imagine a cross section of this, we have a hole going down and a hole coming across, and that is going to be our stove. We're gonna feed it through here, 
draft up and we'll have flames blasting out here, almost like a jet engine. Whoosh. So after a little bit of manpower, we have our side hole right here and we have our top hole. Now we just gotta get a fire started inside there. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is we gotta get a stick fire started in there. So you're gonna need a lot of sticks, like way more than this to get it going. And then you might have to utilize those sticks throughout the process. Um, to get this going, you're also going to use some kind of fire starter that you know is somewhat reliable. In my case, we're gonna use some paper birch. I'm just gonna lay it down inside there. Now, what I found that works really nice with this is to start with your small sticks, just simply dropping them into the top. All right, so you can see right now, um, it's starting to Take hold, okay? What we're really looking for is to get that jet type stream coming out of the top while it is burning. So you just gotta keep feeding it. You gotta get the inside hot enough. You gotta get enough coals in there in order to make it work right. So we're gonna continue with this. Um, what I would recommend though is as you go along here, so I'm fueling the top and I'm fueling the bottom. If it needs oxygen, I'm giving it that. I would also go ahead and pick yourself some small stones. Now, the reason for that is because you're gonna place them small stones across the top. So three or four of them, um, whatever you would like. The reason that you're gonna put that there is because once you get your kettle and you decide you're gonna put it on top of there, it's still going to leave some room. You can't just put it on top, it'll smother the fire out. So you wanna make sure that you have some offset there once this thing's running. So let me continue to fuel it and then we'll show you what it's like when it's full bore working. All right, so down the bottom we have our fire burning and you can see the flame coming out the top. It looks like a forced flame and that's what we want, okay? We want that to look almost pressurized as if we have a constant flow of oxygen coming through. That's gonna superheat whatever we place on top if it's our kettle, okay, just like that, or if we were gonna cook something else. But either way, you can see that flame's coming out really nice right now, and that is exactly what we're looking for. And there you have it, a very easy way to make a stove out of one single log. Yeah, it requires a little bit of work and it requires a specialty tool, but it's something fun to do out here. A great project for just an afternoon out in the woods doing this um, with your friends or family or kids. Um, it would be a great project and a fun thing to do. So uh, impress everybody and try it out. So thanks to Skillshare again. Click that link in the description for your free trial and um, Check me out, coldcrackerbushcraft.com, classes, merchandise, all that good stuff. And until next video, stay supercharged in the woods. <laughs> stay in the woods. <laughs>